So we're going to take a look at a basic wedge motion. That can be learned by anybody that satisfies the principles that I look for in good wedge play. Now, these principles are going to be a good launch, okay? Not too high, not too low, something in that 30 degree range. A transfer of energy that's not too high, so not massively high smash. We're going to look to position the club at impact in a forward leaning to the point of maybe 12 to 18 degrees. We've got a nice little window there. It's going to be pretty much a neutral path and a face square to that path. Now, a little bit of bias right for this version of the swing will be okay. So we're going to run through a setup. We're going to run through how to load on the backswing then how to transfer that energy or that punch into the back of the golf ball. So let's get going. So first thing I would say is in order to deliver the amount of lean that we're looking for, certain things need to be happening with the wrist at impact. Okay, now if you had a particularly weak grip around this way, back of the left hand facing target, you would need to flex the wrist a great deal. Okay, now flexing the wrist a great deal doesn't come naturally to the majority of the amateur golfers. I wouldn't say it comes naturally to the majority of professional golfers either, but there are a fair few in the modern game that have quite a flex wrist at certain points in the golf swing. Don't let that lead you to believe that everyone does it. So flexing my wrist a lot, I could put a decent amount of lean on it, okay? But it wouldn't be a massive range though, it wouldn't be huge. I'd have to really max it out at impact to get to 18 degrees of lean. What I'm gonna suggest is you play with a much more turned grip. And when I say turned, we're gonna go from zero degrees here to 45 degrees turned. 90, zero, 45, so 45 degrees turned. Now what that does is allows the wrist to act like a hinge this way and give us much more range and much more potential to lean the shaft forwards. Okay, now for some of you that might feel pretty normal. For a lot, it won't. For some, you may even have to dial it back a little bit. But we're looking for a 45 degree turned lead hand. Okay, trail hand, put it pretty much on the side of the grip so the right palm would face target. Okay, we don't want this to go right the way underneath with that hand. We want these to be opposing to a degree, but we're not looking for it to be on top. Just back side of the grip, bang on neutral is absolutely fine. Okay, now what that does is puts you in a position where you can deliver a lot of lean, okay, without going to extremes of range of motion in the wrist. You know, my extreme here would be this, which obviously is not going to be realistic, much more than I get with a weak grip flexing. Right hand on the back side is going to allow us to use that right wrist to load the club on the way back. Okay, so yeah, there's going to be some wrist action. Uh, the reason I like to get wrist action on the way back is so that you're not led to create it in transition. Okay, trying to take the wrist all the way out inevitably leads to some adding coming down the wrist angle. On a shot that's not full, that's not really ideal because it's going to leave you in a bit of a sticky spot near the bottom. Okay, so I prefer the loading to take place going back and you can feel that with your trail wrist extending. Okay, now if I extend it 20 degrees, whatever the number is from a dress, I've got my shaft lean there already. Okay, I've dialed it in. I don't need to try and create much more on the way down. So we've got this turned grip. We've got a loading pattern, which is trail wrist lead to give me my address or impact, I should say, shaft lean. Now to deliver this shaft lean into the golf ball, my body needs to do something. And that's gonna to be to rotate open. I'm gonna go hips 20 degrees open, maybe more, chest the same amount. We're not looking for big separation, hips and chest. Feel very much like the body as a whole, chest, pelvis, is leading that loaded, leaning shaft into the golf ball. The final piece of the puzzle is the right arm punch that I mentioned. There's going to be a feeling of pushing across the grip by pushing with my trail elbow, right? Punch position here. Okay, and that keeps the club traveling downwards, forwards. It's going to keep pressure on this wrist to stop it going this way. Okay, if I start to go with my fingertips like this and my arm twists out, then I'm going to lose the angle. If I'm punching straight down the line across the grip this way, I'm going to keep the angle in the wrist and get that lean that we're looking for, all supported with the pivot. Okay, so we've got two little delivery methods. We've got rotation, hips and chest, and that final little piece, a push across the grip to keep the lean on the shaft. Okay, dynamically very, very different to inside 30 hours, not looking for any of this. So what does it look like? Turn grip, setting up pretty square, loading the trail wrist, 
pivot and punch into the follow through. Let's see what we deliver. Okay, pretty good. See the scene in the finish there, it's, it's really kind of, you've described it as held off maybe. That's because I've pushed across the grip for long enough that the club head hasn't gone past me at all. Okay, if I was coming towards camera, it would look somewhat like this, turning, punch position there. Okay, what did it produce? It produced 48 degrees aloft, seven and a half degrees down, path very neutral, face slightly close to path. Decent spin, just popped up a little bit. Let's give it another go. Okay, 45 degrees turned. Get the ball in the zone, that'd be useful. Thank you, quad. Okay, loading, trail wrist. Obviously you're going to turn, other things are gonna happen, it's not just that, but there is a load. Then pivot and little punch forwards. Okay, pretty similar, loft 44, so delivered a little bit less. 58 degrees, so I've de-lofted by 14 degrees. The face wasn't particularly closed or open, it was pretty neutral, so I've not de-lofted and kind of cheated it that way. It's been achieved through lean. Let's go with another one. Turn grip, really feeling like the, the punch is the last thing it delivers, I start to turn elbow starts to push your impact down into the ground, keeps the loft off as long as possible. Let's bring that flight down just a little bit more, I think. That was nice. That was nice. So if you're looking for a model that's not necessarily designed for you, but you wanted something basic, a template that you can follow, Pretty firm believer that in order to deliver the, the shaft lean you need to get the launch you need to get the best touch possible, a turn grip's really helpful. Like I said, you have more range that way than having to try and flex your wrist. Delivering with the pivot is always going to be useful, and that little bit of punch at the end you know, really ties in nicely to a more powerful full iron swing or driver swing.